Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in to another episode of VGA Pure Garage. Today we're going to be working on this 2014 Dodge Journey. Alright, so I've already got the vehicle up in the air and jacked up and have the wheel off. Don't think I need to explain all that to you. You guys have seen me do that before. Or hopefully if you're watching a video you know how to do that by now. Uh, but the first thing we got to do is uh, take off the caliper. There we go. The other thing, um, and actually you can see, so I'm not going to move it up. The caliper won't really swing very far because it's bolted up the caliper line. I mean, I guess you could move, take it out, but it's just easier to just unbolt this bracket, which top one is ABS. Bottom one is the bracket to the brake line. And then now, the caliper can swing out and is free. And uh, it's best to put a box or something underneath. I'm just going to let it rest right there because I'm not going to be moving the wheel. Next, you want to go ahead and remove the caliper bracket. Now I've already done the other side and this rotor is really on there. So I just sprayed right in here for the focus. In each of the stud holes, sprayed some uh, penetrant in there. And now let me see if I can bring it around back. And now, in the light, is right where the hub is near the um, the rotor. I'm gonna spray some penetrant right in there and then just spin the wheel. All right. So now we're at the bench with the calipers and a vise, and um, we're going to pop these out, slide them back. The other side, they were quite a bit worse than this. There's also material stuck inside where material is supposed to be able to leave. The side's actually a lot better than the other one. And just push it back. And if that doesn't work, we do this. We'll be able to get it out. And then we want to take off the old hardware. I have to pick those up or I'm going to step on them and hurt myself. So now all you want to do is the areas where the shim fits or where it's gonna, the new shims are going to go. You just want to file those down to get rid of the rust. That way the pads are able to move um, more freely. So now with the area cleared, take some brake, or not brake, anti-seize, and put it in the areas where the shim is going to touch. This will stop uh, rust from building up, and not rust from building up, but um, yeah, rust from building up and others and um, squeaking, I don't want squeaking. All right, 
So now, hopefully you bought a kit that comes with shims, because you're going to need to. Um, shims have these little uh, like t um, tabs that have a spring load to them. Those need to be facing on the outside of the um, caliper bracket. So because the pad rides on the shim, you just want to put a little bit of anti-seize on that. That'll stop squeaking and um, rust from building up. Then you want to take your new pad and put some anti-seize on the tip of the pad again this is to stop rust from building up and squeaking now what you want to do is see how there's these two the spring loaded clips not, well, so the spring loads of the clip you want to just take the pad and get it in there at an angle see how it's at an angle push it down and forward then you just want to make sure that it moves freely I would say this is the neatest design because then it stops the pad from what you're trying to put in from popping out. So I think that's pretty cool. So go ahead, do that to the other side. Do the same thing, get it behind those spring-loaded clips, in at an angle, and there we go. Well, kinda, there we go. Oh no, no, this side's all buggered up. Let me try that cool. All right, there we go, now they're in. The next thing you wanna do, make sure that your push pins have nice movement grab them. These are kind of uh, blackish with a, the, not the lubricant in them has got metal flakes in it which has caused it to change colors. So I use the 3M silicone paste which I actually found out is the same thing as um, dielectric grease. But anyways you've cleaned off the push pin um, and then you're just going to do a thin coat on the uh, push pin. Nice, then don't forget the tip and coat. Put it back in. Make sure it moves freely and make sure that the end of the boot is seated around the, uh, the guide pin. I put it back in a few times and squish it and that way I get some some of the extra grease or silicone um, out from the inside. Again, just a small amount. Well, not small. It doesn't hurt to use a lot, but you don't want it to uh, not be able to bottom out inside the uh, bracket so much that um it can't can't fully seat and then just then put it in all right i'm gonna leave this here and we're gonna go with the rotor off all right so hopefully now that we've let it sit for a long enough period of time that just a few type light hammers will allow the whole thing to come off and that would happen so oh, there we go so I didn't use penetrant on the other side because I didn't realize it was going to be this stuck on um, but taking the time to put some penetrant on really really helps so there's the old rotor and what actually causes it to get stuck is you're probably thinking it's this surface here it's not it's this surface here that becomes so large 
from the rust buildup that stops it from uh, breaking free. All right, so now what you want to do is you want to clean up the surface and the outside diameter. So now that you've got all that done, what you want to do now is just spray some brake clean on it. Um, get all the stuff off. So now that you've got the area all cleaned up, next thing you want to do is put anti-seize on the hub face where it's going to mate with the rotor. On this one, as you can see there's an inset so you don't really have to worry about it. You want to get the lip of the hub so you don't get that build up again. <sighs> Alright, so now we need to compress the pistons. Um, I have a tool, you can use a, uh, you know, a C-clamp, but oddly enough, I don't have any C-clamps. So just compress the caliper with either one of these tools or a... You know, a uh, C-clamp. Back it out. All right, so now that that's done, the only thing we're waiting for is the correct parts because Vance screwed up again and gave the wrong size rotors to the customer because that's just what Vance does. All right, now that there's the correct rotor, go ahead, slap that on. Take your bracket. Actually, you should probably turn the wheel to make it easier for me. I'm gonna have to. Second. Out one. And the second one.
so that's how you replace the front rotors and pads on a Dodge Journey. Um, I'd recommend you, that you know your OD of your rotor before you go to like a place like Advanced um, to make sure that you get the right one, in this case, wrong ones. Um, but uh, make sure that you pump your brakes first before you just head out um, because the pistons and the caliper are opened up. If you guys have any questions or comments, put it in the comment section. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why. Now clean your tools off, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.